Happy EV Day, everyone. Yes, today is Electric Vehicle Day. It's a day to create awareness of, to promote, and to talk about the benefits of electric vehicles, both in Australia and worldwide. We've had a lot of questions here at the Australian Road Research Board through our webinars and our social media about electric vehicles, the benefits they bring, and the uptake in Australia, and lots of other questions just around the general use of electric vehicles, when they might be here in a majority. So what better day to ask an expert about electric vehicles, and today we're speaking to Dr. Robert Cockarn from the Australian Road Research Board. Robert is the senior transport economist here and an expert in battery electric vehicles and future transportation systems. So Robert, what is World EV Day? So the World EV Day is a day that where where we can or we should celebrate the uptake of electric vehicles, the promotion of um, sustainable transportation. So I think this year is the inaugural World EV Day. It's supposed to become an annual institution. And um, we are celebrating all the fleet owners, the electric vehicle operators, the electric vehicle owners, the power generators, the renewable electricity generators, to yeah, celebrate the uptake of electric vehicles um, and a more a cleaner public transportation or general transportation system. What are the benefits of electric vehicles? Um, so the benefits of electric vehicles, um, there are multiple yeah. benefits. The, the most important one is the environmental benefit, which means um, electric vehicles are very likely to emit less greenhouse gas emissions compared to petrol diesel vehicles in general um, throughout their whole life cycle. And um, they also create less pollutants. Not only greenhouse gas emissions, the pollutants in terms of um, uh, in terms of exhaust pipe emissions, exhaust pipe little particulates, for example, which is very important in cities, um, which contributes also to health, um, has health benefits. Um, and then the other main benefit of electric vehicles is that they are most likely to be less costly than petrol diesel vehicles. They have um, their whole of life costs are probably lower compared to what we drive today most most of the time. And um, there are other benefits as well. For example, you can. Uh, um, decouple our transportation system from the fossil fuel that we use today. We can run our entire transportation system basically on renewable energies um, and make um, yeah, our cars and road transport even more cleaner. What about the percentages involved? There, there, a lot of emissions do come from the transport sector, don't they? Exactly, yeah. We, um, in Australia, or in many countries actually, the um, a lot of emissions come from the transport sector. In Australia, we have about 19% um, of the overall emissions um, from, us, uh, from the entire of Australia that come from the road transport sector. And out of that 19%, um, the vast majority, about 80 or 85%, come from road transport. Now, you've mentioned that EVs are better for the environment, but can you elaborate on the actual efficiencies and emission savings, including electricity generated at the power station for EVs? Of course. So um, electric vehicles are cleanest if they are charged from renewable energies, of course. If you charge them from the average Australian um, energy network, um, they're not as clean as if you charge them from renewable energies, for example, because the Australian energy network, the average um, power that is generated in Australia contains a lot of power from coal or from gas, which is um, power from essentially not renewable energies, from fossil fuels. And, um, but even if um, we charge them from the general or from the average Australian grid, electric vehicles are most likely to be less, um, uh, emit less emissions compared to petrol diesel vehicles over their um, lifetime. Of course, um, they don't create any emissions when they drive, they only create emissions where the electricity is produced. But if we manage to um, incorporate more and more renewable energies into our electricity network in the future, um, electric vehicles will become a lot cleaner. And also, also today, it depends a lot on how you use your electric vehicle. For example, if you have it at home and if you have the solar panels on your roof, you can basically charge your electric vehicle completely from renewable energies. And it also depends on different states. Where in, for example, in Tasmania and South Australia, we have um, a very high percentage of renewable energies compared to other states. So there's, um, it depends on where you drive your electric vehicle and how you use it. But um, overall, I think we see a lot of benefits from um, electric vehicles in general. So where is Australia right now in terms of electric vehicle adoption? 
So Australia in general is, um, in terms of electric vehicle jobs, is lagging behind a bit countries like Europe or regions like Europe and the United States, behind a, um, other developed nations or regions in the world. And the reason for that is that the Australian market is not as ready yet as other markets in terms of, um, uh, yeah, to adopt electric vehicles. Um, we are not as attractive for auto manufacturers to allocate their vehicles to Australia compared to other markets. So what has been achieved and hasn't been achieved in terms of uh, um, EV adoption? So at the moment in, in Australia we are lacking an overall national policy, although state policies have been de developed or straight strategies and roadmaps have been developed to, uptake, uh, to promote the uptake of electric vehicles um, in different states and different areas. Um, but this is still under development, it's not yet fully developed. We need more policies um, with regards to um, incentives or um, fleet penetration targets, sales targets. Um, we need better emission um, regulations as well um, to like, encourage people or encourage fleet owners to uh, incorporate electric vehicles into their fleets. Um, we um, also need maybe uh, tax incentives or sales incentives to lower the prices um, for people to encourage them to um, uh, use electric vehicles, to buy electric vehicles compared to petrol or diesel vehicles. And um, despite all of that, um, that, we are lacking behind, but we are still achieving great progress as well in the last year. So the, um, the number of electric vehicles that has been sold in Australia from 20, 2018 to 2019 to 2020 has continuously improved and um, even doubled in the last years. I think, and um, there are some incentives, for example, the Australian Capital Territory, Canberra, and um, New South Wales and Queensland, they are further um, ahead in terms of um, electric vehicle policies in general compared to other states, for example. So we are doing something, but um, we are not there yet. You've mentioned cost before, but how do you see the price point of electric vehicles becoming competitive with petrol and diesel cars with internal combustion engines? So yeah. Um, Electric vehicles today are still more expensive generally than a comparable petrol deal vehicle, um, but their cost has dramatically decreased in the past years, and it's going to continue to decrease in the future as well. And the main uh, reason why electric vehicles are expensive there is their battery or their new powertrain, their battery in the electric motor. And um, when when we talk about cost, we need to um, consider the whole cost of the entire. Um, use it freer of that vehicle, not only the sales um, cost or sales price, but um, also the operating cost and um, the maintenance cost of um, electric vehicles compared to your um, internal combustion engine vehicle. And um, in that respect, in, the, in terms of running costs or operating costs, the electric vehicles are much better. They're much lower, have much lower running costs, they have much less moving parts in, in the car and electric um, motor compared to a um, petrol or diesel engine. And um, over the whole cost, uh, whole life of the vehicle, the total cost can um, be already today can be less um, than compared to a petrol diesel vehicle, depending on your use case, depending on how um, often you drive the car, where you drive the car, or um, how you use it in general. So, what is the relationship between autonomous vehicles (AVs) and electric vehicles (EVs)? So, autonomous vehicles and electric vehicles—they are two different technologies. They're not related to each other in general. Um, electric vehicles are um, vehicles that are driven by an electric motor, and, uh, which is powered by a battery, for example, with electricity from a battery. And um, the, uh, the so electric vehicles refer to actually how the car is driven, how the drivetrain of the car. And autonomous vehicles are vehicles that um, are driven without a human driver. It refers to the technology how the how the vehicle is driven, um, guided by sensors and. Um, electrical or mechanical signals. Um, you could possibly, um, you don't have to have an electric vehicle in order to make it autonomous. You can make any car or any vehicle which is petrol diesel driven autonomous. And the key benefits of electric vehicles is their environmental benefit, so that we can decouple um, the, the energy that is um, used to drive the electric vehicles, we can decouple that from our fossil fuels, we can run the um, electric vehicle on renewable energies. And the key benefits of autonomous vehicles is that they are most likely to be safer because they eliminate the major risk for accidents, um, which is a human driver, um, by replacing it by sensors and um, um, the, uh, yeah, making it safer in general. For example, um, uh, 
an autonomous vehicle will never get distracted, will never be intoxicated. So um, it's the main aspect, I think, is safety. And uh, both vehicles, both electric and, and autonomous vehicles, they're both going to be um, going to reduce the transport cost in general, I think, um, in the future, um, make transport cheaper than it is at the moment. So what is ARRB doing in relation to EVs? So um, we are doing different things um, in relation to electric vehicles. Um, we have different teams with different um, areas of, of expertise in our company. For example, we can look at the, or we have looked at the, um, the policy, um, or the policy and uh, aspect of electric vehicles. For example, we have recently completed a project um, on what road operators can do to support, um, encourage people to uptake, uh, to use electric vehicles to support the uptake um, of electric vehicles. Um, and um, yeah, what can be done in this area? When we have a, a very new team that has grown rapidly in the last uh, few months, on the, that is working on the life cycle um, or on the sustainability aspect of um, uh, transport systems, including electric vehicles, of course. Um, so we can look at the overall life cycle emissions of um, the transportation system. We can look at the overall costs, life cycle cost of the transportation system. For example, at the moment we are developing um, a tool that um, allows us to assess the life cycle emissions of a piece of pavement, which includes the use phase of that piece of pavement, which means that the traffic or the vehicles that run over that pavement throughout its life, um, lifetime, which means um, we can also look at um, what impact a certain number of, of electric vehicles would have on the whole of life emissions of that um, piece of infrastructure. Um, we also um, we can look at other aspects, for example, the not only passenger vehicles, but also heavy vehicles, freight vehicles. We have a project um, where we are looking at the um, what, what can be done in the heavy vehicle sector to reduce emissions, um, for example, driver training or in introducing of um, interaction of electric vehicles, hydrogen electric vehicles, for example. So there's some different aspects we're looking at, and um, we have different teams with different areas of expertise that. Um, have a wide, um, wide area around electric vehicles, what um, the different aspects um, that we need to look at. Finally, Robert, let me put you on the spot. Are you driving an electric vehicle? I'm not driving an electric vehicle just yet, but um, I can tell you that I would if um, Australia had um, the proper incentives to uh, encourage people to uptake, uh, to use electric vehicles um, and to lower the price point, the overall life cycle cost of electric vehicles. Well, let's hope those incentives come soon and the uptake starts to rise in Australia. Robert, thank you for your time. No problems at all. Thank you.